Continuing the line of thought of arcs, session number four is dedicated to curves and gradients. We're going to also talk about images briefly, but really the thematic topic here is control points. What does that mean? Well, drawing arcs is you're controlling the drawing inside of a path. While as soon as we finish drawing with arcs, and we're going to look at that in the, this lecture, the following lecture will follow curves, which basically are lines that you control and change their angles using a control point. These curves are called a quadratic curve. The following lecture will be a curve that has two control points, which is called a Bezier curve. We're going to see both and really understand the differences between them and how we could use them to create really complicated shapes. We're going to then take a break from controls because we're going to learn how to draw images onto our screen. Once we do that, we're going to revisit back to curves and, and cut through to a new topic, which will be gradients. And how do you create color manipulation that is really a controlled point where you're controlling colors from a, one color to another? We'll start with the linear gradient, and then we'll complete the section with the radial gradient. So without further ado, let's jump right into arcs. Drawing arcs we've met a few times throughout this title, but in this lecture we'll go ahead and look at how to create a pie chart, which is completely different than what we've created so far, and also we're going to see how to create a Pac-Man. Literally what we're going to do is get really familiar with arcs, so let's jump right into it. Let's kick off this section with something that should be really easy. I already created a basic flag and together we're going to work with the arc to create Pac-Man or a Pac-Man type of person. Now I created already the function, the create Pac-Man and integrated it just the way we did in previous lectures. I got our width and height. I set our context. I set our X and Y coordinates to the center of our screen and defined a radius for our Pac-Man. And I also defined a radian property. So far we've been calling it degree, but really now that we're deep into the world of drawing in a computer, it is called a radian. One radian, which is reflects the idea of one degree, but in computer language, which is basically that math pi divided by 180. We then filled our start set of fill style and drew a black canvas on our screen. Let's go ahead and continue and I'm going to go to our context and begin a path because now we want to create a relatively complex shape and I'm also going to go ahead and reconfigure our fill style and again I have that pre-configured already so I'm going to go ahead here and just grab the value that should go inside of here and once we have the color I'm going to go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do before I start drawing is I'm going to move my coordinates to the center of my screen which is our x and y coordinates. Now that we've got that and we're inside of the center point of the circle, the next step is we want to draw out that circle area. Now to do that, I'm going to go ahead and use the arc, and we've met the arc previously. The first two properties are properties we've seen before, which are the center point of our circle. The next is the radius. The next point are two points that say, how far do we want to go? Until now, we went from zero to twice our, basically to 360 degrees, from zero to two times pi. This time around, I'm going to go ahead and say I want to go to 40 times our radian, giving us a 40 degree. And then I want to do for our next property, I want to end it at 320 degrees. I already calculated it to be true. Next, I'm going to set this to be false, and I'm going to show you the difference between false and true in this case once we run this. And now that we created the arc, I really want to close things up. And the way I want to close things up is I want to go to our context, and I want to go back to our center point of our circle. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and call the line two and go into our X and Y center point again. So again, I'm creating an open circle, starting from our center point, creating an almost complete circle, missing about 80 degrees. Well, not about it, 80 degrees. And then I'm traveling back to the initial point. All that's left for me to do is to close this shape and go ahead to close the path and then call the fill. And literally, that's all I had to do. If I go ahead here and click on refresh, we'll see that now we will have the Pac-Man shape if I don't have any error. And I'm seeing that rod ion is not the right variable. It's called, it's radian. So let me go ahead here and just make sure that I'm using the right variable. And let's go ahead and give this one more shot. And we still have your content lined width is not a function in line 366. So let's see, line 366. Oh, I because I, I wanted to do line two and I wrote width for some reason. So line two, let's save that. 
click on refresh and here we go we have our pac-man and it's beautifully positioned exactly as we wanted it to so let me just go through this really quickly again we began a path close the path everything here is familiar even the arc is familiar only this time it's the first time that we send in not a complete circle we didn't complete our circle and what we did was our first step was to start from the center point to draw out the partial circle and then close it by going back to the initial point where we started from and then we were ready to fill our shape up now if this time around if i set it to be true our last parameter counterclockwise actually has a meaning so instead of having our defined coming from here through here what would happen is the shape itself would be drawn in the other direction opposite direction so we would actually get only the actual element that is missing now to that matter if you wanted for example instead of creating a pac-man shape but instead of that let me go ahead here instead of that if you wanted to i could have went ahead here and duplicated this whole section and then went ahead and just set this to be true I could create a pie chart all I really would have to do is push our x and y coordinates a bit really just our x coordinate maybe I could just push that x coordinate maybe by let's say five points and then it would be sit our slice would basically sit outside of our pie partially or if we wanted to make it really sharp then go ahead there and make that pie go out or notice what I've, what's happening here that also we're, we're having here a stretch instead of going out so what i want to do is i want to make sure that when i'm changing my x position everything here is valid but the only problem is, is that i didn't change my move to points also so i would have to also change my starting move point and also my line to move point so my x coordinate is always in that right position and i'm not having to a few different positions stretching out the item so if i would do that then i would have that pie element removed so there you go so now you know how to create a pac-man and you would also know how to create a pie type of chart so that's it in this lesson we really got to know arcs